Stop the Bleed is a FEMA DHS program meant to provide citizens that they are the help until help arrives, teaching the basics of bleeding control, either be it direct pressure, a tourniquet usage, or wound packing. The ABCs of bleeding control go over knowing where the bleeding is coming from, alerting the need for 911, so calling 911, and of course, compression for direct injury. So find out once you've identified the bleeding, once 911 has been called, how you wanna stop the bleeding in one of the earlier discussed mentions of direct pressure, tourniquet usage, or wound packing. We were very excited when we heard about this, and it came about because part of our mission is to engage and help citizens in the city of Tacoma Park be able to help themselves. As Kornfeld said, you are the help until help arrives. This doesn't involve a lot of fancy equipment or a lot of uh, external connections. This means, unfortunately, there have been shootings, there are fires, there are other accidents that if people can be nearby and help why not provide them with the assistance? And so this is a perfect kind of project that the Emergency Preparedness Committee can offer the citizens of the city of Tacoma Park so that they can help others, which in Tacoma Park is one of our, um, is in our DNA, helping others, being connected to others. Here's a way that you can help others, which could in fact prevent something more serious or even death. I learned a great deal today from the Stop the Bleed program. Um, one of the things is how quickly you need to make sure that uh, to make the decision about applying a tourniquet. Um, as we were talking about different experiences, the EMTs who are here with us in the class, um, I was just surprised at um, how quickly you need to actually make a decision and apply a tourniquet to help save someone's life. For any injuries on the extremities, be that arms or legs, you're able to use a tourniquet. Any wounds related to the neck, groin, or the abdomen, you are not able to use a tourniquet because that could be providing more injuries to the patient. When in doubt, direct pressure will be able to contain the bleeding, but you may want to be using additional stuff such as hemostatic dressing. Hemostatic dressing is to above average bandages that has bleeding control agents in it. It's more commonly known as quick clot, which is currently on version three. To me, this is very exciting because for a number of reasons. Number one, the Emergency Preparedness Committee is you know, sponsoring this training, and that's important. I think it gets the word out about the committee in the community. When I first heard about this a few months ago, I was extraordinarily excited because emergency preparedness and stop the bleed training, first aid training, CPR training, however you want to categorize it, is so important these days. They are learning how to be the help until help arrives. We're looking to offer these classes on a monthly basis in Tacoma Park and the greater community as a way of helping the citizens across the county understand what it takes and how they can save a life. While this class never guarantees that a life will be saved, it provides someone the tools to be successful in any type of situation. Those who were here today and those from the previous one, again, have said this, is very, this appears to be very helpful and it's something that you feel you can take control over. You see, that's the difference from perhaps some other things. You can be in charge, know enough about what's going on that you feel you can help. I hope you never wind up using it, but you may. And it's important that you have some idea how to use it and how to respond to a situation where you may need a tourniquet or to apply direct pressure to a wound in a uh, laceration wound situation. Please get involved with the Emergency Preparedness Committee. Please take your CPR courses from the firehouse. Please sign up for this training too. I think the more, I know everybody's busy, but the more training you can get, the better. And the training has been made easier and a little more simple to, to be able to obtain today. Because people are busy. But with everything going on, I think it's very important to have CPR, first aid, certainly stop the bleed training, and always be prepared for an emergency. And if you have any questions, you can always contact the Emergency Preparedness Committee or go to the website at Tacoma Park under the uh, Tacoma Park website under the Emergency Preparedness, because that'll lead you to different websites where you can learn about emergency preparedness or contact the committee, because we'll be glad to help you out.
we recommend everyone take it and we are happy to teach this class to any group be it boy scouts girl scouts church group anything out there we're happy to teach this program it's designated for people ages 13 and above and is taught across the nation successfully to all types of participants I think this is important information for any of us to have, um, as was discussed in the class today. Um, you know, injuries do happen from people just tripping, falling. We had the example of someone who was moving and cut themselves using a box cutter. Um, to unfortunately, the times we are living in, where we have seen um, mass shootings and other events take place. So we need to make sure we're prepared in our community uh, to uh, prevent deaths and to help those. I want to really thank the Emergency Preparedness Committee uh, for staying on top of uh, these new trainings and bringing them to our community. Um, I think that's really important uh, and really helps us in the city when residents are this involved in making sure that we're doing all we can to um, keep people safe in our community. Difference Makers is a uh, nonprofit organization uh, run here at Tacoma. Uh, we're uh, known as an after school club to most of the people here at Tacoma, but we also do a lot of um, stuff outside of school like uh, this Winterfest. So usually we do uh, fundraisers and sales to support our projects during the year, where, uh, during which we do like um, fundraisers and uh, food drives and clothing drives to support our, our other organizations around Tacoma. Uh, we have several events like gift wrapping, making stuffies for disabled children or terminally ill children, as well as events like Winterfest, where we have free arts and crafts that children can do. They do a lot of volunteering around the school and the community in general. Like in the winter, they go and help um, like elderly community members to clean up the snow, and in the fall, they rake leaves and things like that. It's typically on the middle school level, but I'm a Difference Makers Teen Ambassador. So I was a Difference Makers in middle school, but now that I'm in high school, I just help out the middle schoolers with their projects. So we do a lot of small arts and crafts projects. For example, we made um, pinatas for extraordinary birthdays for kids in homeless shelters who couldn't have birthday parties. And we also made cards for veterans, but we also do more bigger scale volunteering activities, like volunteering at soup kitchens um, to feed the homeless. Uh, most of our members come from uh, Tacoma Park itself. So we're uh, usually, uh, we have a large after school club. So uh, we have around 200 members. So they're ranging from sixth to eighth grades. But we also have a branch in, uh, I believe, Richard Montgomery High School, which just consists of uh, a couple of high schoolers who are former members of Difference Makers here at Tacoma and we have a lot of members around the community who are helping us with our projects that are also Difference Makers. Every year um, I make a bunch of arts and crafts like ornaments and then I come here and sell them and we usually donate the money to a charity so this year we're donating the money to get art supplies um, for local shelters. Small Things Matter is a nonprofit organization ran by teenagers to help empower children to help other children. For our literacy program we go to Tacoma Park library and we read to children and we also donate books to schools and my favorite event is um, when we go out to different events and make stuffies for children in hospitals like NIH. I like movie night which happens every month and it's like new this year so it's pretty exciting. Yeah. I really like the um, like to, um, <laughs> events like Tacoma uh, Park Folk Festival and Winterfest because they're really fun and you get to see a lot of products. And my favorite is doing raffling because you can give people some really great stuff and make people happy. My favorite event would probably be Kid Fest where we, ha we invited a lot of kids to come work with us and make stuffies for the children in the hospitals and we got a lot of students that day to come and help us. My favorite event would be probably when the Teen Ambassadors for Difference Makers helped to make gifts for NIH Children's Inn. Uh, my favorite event would probably be uh, GYSD, which is a Global Youth Service Day in um, 
April, I believe. Uh, it's, it's kind of like this, but we have a lot more like uh, organizations coming in and like um, kind of sharing what, what they do for the community. Uh, this is also pretty fun. This is uh, Winterfest, of course, and um, during Winterfest, we always have uh, a concession stand like this, but uh, the entire community comes and shares their arts and craft and their culture with the, everyone else. So it's, a, it's a, always a very uh, fun and uh, cheerful time, especially around the holiday season. I have uh, photographic work. It is uh, photographs of self-portraits of me in a deteriorated, abandoned buildings in the local area, actually. And the idea is that I'm starting out photographing the scenes in this abandoned building, and then the more I went to this location, the more I felt that I really wanted to bring out some of the emotion that I felt when I was there, the, the really, it's, it's a place of despair and abandonment. And so I wanted the viewer to have more opportunity to, to experience that. So I, I photographed myself in the buildings and also I superimposed uh, myself in some of the pictures using digital photography techniques. So working towards the ideas of collage and montage to uh, bring out more, uh, more emotion, more of striking images. The challenges in terms of being the artist and the subject of the of the image. So it takes a lot of experimentation to make something work and it's about uh, it's about putting yourself out there a little bit too to really be in this work and put yourself on the wall and let people look at it and, and maybe they come away with the same experience that you do. Most people, when they look at a piece of art, put themselves in the image. They, what, what they bring to it is more important, actually. So this body of work I call Grief and Acceptance, and it's a series of pieces that I created from after my ex-boyfriend committed suicide about a year and a half ago, and then followed by a series of losses. So the art reflects different stages of grief um, and me trying to achieve acceptance through art making. The art, I mean, the art's not the challenge. <laughs> Life is the challenge, and, and then art is kind of how we are able to cope with it. <laughs> There's two pieces that are, I really, are really kind of near and dear to me. Um, one is depression, and it's, it's on this wall here, and it shows, uh, it's a self-portrait of me, and like the feeling, how I feel when I'm depressed, like I'm trapped inside my head and then like it's agony and I'm torturing myself. And then, you know, the things that I'm trying to do to cope with it, um, like, you know, using pharmaceuticals and, and um, trying to use nature um, to cope with it. And then the piece that's like, I guess my favorite in the show is Eric reincarnated as a bird. So that is a mandala that I made. So Eric, he just, he always loved birds. He would, he, like, anytime he saw a bird, you know, he would notice it, and he would even call out to them. He just, I mean, it wasn't cute. He would just be like, call, call. And, it, and, and he just, like, seemed to have a connection with birds. And in my art, when we were together, it was someone I knew some, from eighth grade, um, you know, and I would always show him, represent him as a blackbird in my art because he loved art. I mean, because he loved birds. And um, I guess... You know, I was, you know, sad and I was grief stricken one day and, um, you know, a bird came up to me and I like whispered to it and I was like, Eric, you know, and, and like, I don't, I don't really know if he's a bird or, or, or if he's anything anymore, but um, I, you know, made an artwork about him being reincarnated as a bird. So these are my handmade paper pieces. Um, 
There's this one is site specific. It's called for boating. I make paper out of cotton fibers, abaca, and this one I embedded uh, mesh into it. Um, the process is pouring uh, paper um, uh, using basically a couple different uh, frames and. Uh, for these ones, I made them outside so you can kind of see a lot of the holes and I use the environment to contribute different uh, patterns. So I, I make them outside. I made uh, a lot of these actually while it was raining. So yeah, so a lot of the decaying came, came naturally, um, speeding up using because the water will repel the fiber. Um, it's definitely hanging them. This is really my first um, site-specific installation of the scale. I was able to do that by kind of replicating this space in my studio and then bringing it here. So it's, I definitely had this in mind, the airflow from the, the kids walking uh, through the halls and uh, seeing it from below. And I have a studio at DC Art Studios. It's technically in DC, but it's on the Tacoma DC line. And I think this is a great asset to Tacoma Park. Uh, a lot of our community loves the arts and being involved and you know I live in Tacoma Park so being able to exhibit here is a great opportunity. This is what being an artist is about. You can't just keep all these things piled up under your bed. You have to put it out into the community. Um, you have to show people what you're doing. I think this is a great thing because this gives people the opportunity to not only experience art but to, to uh, find out why the artist created it. And, and also, we're, we're here uh, in this themed exhibit, The Beauty of Decay, and we want people to think about decay, deterioration, grief, even death, because they are all part of life, and there's a beauty in that. It, it's, it's about the uh, ephemeral nature of life, really, that these buildings and, and this art is here for a short time, as we all are here for a short time. A zombie. My mom bought face paint from the store and we put it on my face. We went to the Salvation Army and got a white shirt to stain blood on. And then we got an old jean jacket to wear. Optimus cried. He goes trapped onto a truck. A ninja and a robot. It looks cool. Candy girl, because when I had a performance, I wear this. I didn't dress up as nothing. This is an Indiana Jones costume, and we have been going around to the thrift stores looking for pants that have a bunch of pockets in them, and we found this like leather jacket and this shirt with a bunch of pockets in. And then it took us not very long to assemble it. I hadn't watched the movie till this month and I had shown some interest in being him last year, but instead I was Hamilton. So this year we decided that I go out as uh, Indiana Jones. The Green Monster. It's a wall in Fenway Park where it's green and all the outfielders run into it. My costume is an alien like every Marshall, floating around with no gravity. I'm Beetlejuice, and I just went to a thrift store and got some, yeah, stuff. A lot of kids my age don't really know the movie, so I'm kind of a mystery to a lot of my friends. I'm a panda, and I don't know why I chose it. I just like pandas. <laughs> um, I chose a bunny, and I chose a bunny because well, we never get to see a bunny, 
and I love them, and my dad's allergic to them, so I am a bunny, and that's just happy. I'm Dizzy and from Descendants, and I chose to be Dizzy because I'm obsessed with Descendants. I picked Link because my favorite video game character. It's my favorite video game character, and I really enjoy playing it, but my mom and dad won't let me get a Switch. I'm Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games, and I chose this costume because I just finished the book series, The Hunger Games, and I really liked it. I'm a minion from Despicable Me. Um, I chose this costume because they're one of my favorite um, Disney Pixar characters. I'm Athena, the Greek goddess of um, wisdom and war. And I chose this costume because I'm really into Greek mythology. And all my friends know that I always have my head in my book, so yeah. So I'm a blue moon, and traditionally blue moons come once every hundred or so years. But um, this previous year, there was more than two blue moons, so I just thought, you know, I'd be a blue moon. The dark. I'm claustrophobic. Voldemort. I think me and my sister have the same thing. We're both really scared of creepy baby dolls. Somebody who like opens their guts and like a zombie. Yeah. A zombie. Vampire. Uh. Zombies, I don't know. I'd say not getting enough candy for Halloween. Octopi. <laughs> Killer clowns. Same, I hate them. Coraline. Any kind, like some monsters or aliens. I'm scared of clowns. I don't like spiders and clowns. <laughs> Chocolate. Mine would be candy corn. Definitely candy corn. Uh, this is so hard. I know it's so hard. All candy so Chocolate. I'm Sour Patch Kids. I'd say Reese's Pieces because you get a couple bites in of them. Chocolate. Snickers. Twizzlers. Sour Patch Kids. Laffy Taffy. Heath Bars. Reese's. I have to say Snickers. Your government patties. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite candy. It's just fun to see all the costumes that people come up with. Um, and it's just a whole bunch of people that like Halloween. I really like the Monster Bash because it's just a time to like hang out with friends and see other people's costumes. Um, and I also like it because we get goodie bags. I'm sad it's not outside this year. Well, it's a time-honored tradition for all of us, and we always go, and it's really fun to see everybody's costumes, and we always have fun, even though we don't usually enter the costume condos, we have fun watching it and stuff, so. I don't know. I really like the um, Transformer costumes when they, like, lie down and, like, transforms. I come every year for like the costume contest and see uh, what people are. Uh, last year I was Prince, and I've been a lot of other costumes. I wish we did it at Piney Branch because the auditorium is way bigger, but you know, can't get everything. I just got here, so um, I haven't seen any costumes that I re uh, really like yet, but for previous years, um, there was one big like robotic uh, cupcake that was really cool, <laughs> so um, yeah. I also like going to the Monster Bash with all my friends. I really like all the festivities and that everyone dresses up and they have a parade. So then you get to see all the different costumes and all the festivities and stuff. The 
it's really fun and I get to see other people's creative costumes. I think my favorite costume is um, witches or like... Um, other things, but yeah, I, I don't know. I was looking for a party and the balloons. I like the candy and the parade. I like it outside better because you have a longer parade and this year we didn't get any candy. Oh, also I like to see who wins the contest. I like to see who wins the contest and see how good their costumes are because the winning costumes, I like to see how scary they are and usually if they, to see if they give me nightmares, which they usually don't.